And there we go, our first table. Now, quickly, we'll write a simple PHP script to access it. The way you include PHP into your website is like this. You can type PHP, press tab, and I'll autocomplete to this, the PHP closing, opening and closing tags. We'll give some space, and inside here is where you put all your PHP code. So we're going to create a PHP variable now, and the way this is done is by typing a dollar sign and then the name of the variable. We're going to call this con, because this is our connection variable. You'll understand what this means in a minute, so if you don't understand it, just follow along. And this is going to be equal to MySQLI connect. And remember I told you about the autocomplete that Sublime gives you? Right there. So click connect. And inside these brackets, you're going to put double quotes and then localhost. Okay, and outside those double quotes, comma, another double quotes. And here you're going to put root, which is the username for your database. And remember, we, we didn't set a username or anything in here. So the username and password are going to be by default. So the default username is root, so we'll just leave it as that for now. Put another comma, password, which as I just said, by default there is no password. So you can just put the double quotes in like that to mean no password. And then the name of the database you're going to be connecting to, which in our case is social, as that's what we called it. Whatever you called it, just type that name in here. So double quotes, and then mine was called social. There we go, and don't forget your semicolon at the end of that line. So that's our connection variable. And just to let yourself know, we can add a little comment. Oh, and that's nice. Okay, so now we're going to do another thing, which just will let us know if there's ever an error connecting to the database. So we can say if MySQLI connect error no. I don't have to say that word, but error no, and brackets, and that's it, nothing goes inside those brackets. Remember your curly brackets too, and in here we're going to put echo, fail to connect, and also we're going to add to it the error message that there would be, and we do this by simply typing mysqli connect error no, and hit semicolon. Now let me explain what this does quickly. This is checking if there's any errors. If there are errors, you're going to echo, which in PHP just means put on screen, similar to print or print line in other languages. Echo, fail to connect, and then you're going to add to it the error message. This dot right here means add to a string. So you have your string right here, and then the dot means add this to the string. Okay. So it will print out all of this. Now if we save this right now, by command S or file save, however you do it, and go back to our web page and just refresh that, we shouldn't get any errors and we shouldn't see anything different because we haven't done anything with the database yet. However, to check everything's working, we can change the name of the database it's going to connect to to one which doesn't exist. Okay, so there's, there's no database with that name, so now when I save it and refresh the page, we should see an error. There we go. It's trying to connect to a database that doesn't exist. And there's our error string. Fail to connect, and then that is the error message. Ignore that, I should have taken that out. So there we go. So we can just change that back now so that it's correct. So the correct name of the database. And one last thing is we're going to write a simple insert query to give our test table some values. So we're going to create a query variable using a dollar sign query equals mysqli query and now your query goes inside here the first thing we need to do though inside this bracket is give it the connection variable we created up here okay so dollar sign con which is what we called it comma and this is where the query will go put your double quotes in and here we're going to say insert into test values, brackets, and inside these brackets we're going to put single quotes, one, and then comma, and then a set of single quotes, and inside there we're going to put a name, so I'll put Reese, 
and put your semicolon at the end of that line too. So let me just explain what this is doing. We're saying using this connection variable that we created up here, insert into the test table the values one and Reese. Because if you remember, our test table, if you click on click on test and then click on structure, this shows us that we have two columns in this table, an ID, which takes integer values, and a name column, which takes varchar, which is just like strings or text. And when we go back to our page and refresh this, we shouldn't see any difference. Well, that, that error will go away, of course, but we shouldn't actually see anything on the page. But instead, if we go to our test table now, click on that, we see that the ID one and the name Reese has been inserted. We can go back to Sublime Text and change these values if we really want to. We can say two, and we can put whatever we want. Save that. Refresh the page. Again, the things happen, but when we access the page, the script gets executed, and it will have inserted the values. So refreshing this will show us the newly inserted values. So there we go. We're all set up, and we're ready to begin creating our social media website. Once again, if any of that was a bit slow paced for you, stick with me. It will be picking up. And also, any questions at all about anything you've seen in this video, ask away, and I'll be happy to answer for you.